Welcome, let's begin with one of the most interesting topics for today and that is India is depopulating might be. So let's talk about some of the interesting statistics and then we'll move forward towards another important topics like locust which have been a serious concern mainly in Western India. Also we would talk about the tree rings and its relation to climate change, arsenic contamination in India. So those are some of the burning topics for today. Now talking about population explosion. At the time of independence, we said we had around 350 billion, million people, people that were residing in India. And India was one of the first developing countries to have a family planning program back in 1951. At that point, we decided that we would be able to curb the growth of population. Now, how do we understand it? We understand it with terms of total fertility rate vis-a-vis -vis the replacement rate. Now, replacement rate is the rate at which you are able to exactly replace the population. Now, what would happen if this total fertility rate would be greater than the replacement rate? That means there would be growth. But if there this is less than the replacement rate, that means there would be decline in the population that would be seen. At present, we say that we have a total fertility rate of 2.1 and if that is achieved, we would have a stable population. 20 of the states and the union territories in India have reached below this level or below this rate that we say. But still, you have states like Bihar where this is extremely high as of now as you can see in this picture. Now, coming on to the next important aspect is with this growing population, what is the impact on environment? So, impact on environment definitely with finite resources and unlimited uh, human beings or unlimited wants being generated because of human beings. There is scarcity that comes into play. So, there is higher consumption for resources, depletion of important resources, higher waste generation, higher level of pollution, higher level of greenhouse emissions that come into play. When we talk about threshold population, now this term is differently used both in economics and geography. When we talk about economics, it is the minimum number of people that are needed for a service to sustain. So let's say I start a factory or I start a business, a showroom in this region. And what are the minimum number of customers that I would require to make this showroom sustainable? So let's say if it is small, we compare it with an example of Spencer and a shoe shop. So Spencer would require might be 1 lakh people to have a sustainable business, but a smaller shoe shop might require around 25 people, 25,000 people to have a sustainable business. So that is the threshold, the minimum number of people which are required to make a service sustainable or viable. On the other hand, when we talk about threshold from a geographical perspective or a spatial perspective, we understand it's the number of a uh, minimum number of people that are required before a particular good or service could be brought into that area or could be actually be part of that area. And that is where we marginally separate the differences of the threshold population in terms of definition uh, when it comes to population. The next is cesareans. Now cesareans have been a growing trend over the years. Telangana is one of the states which has registered highest percentage with around 58% of which a very high percent around 80% in private hospitals. Now why this switch has been seen as of now. It is because of much more convenience, much more uh, kind of prestige symbol that could be seen as. Now, what are the states that are highly prone to it? So, you have Jammu Kashmir, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala. So, those are some of the states with highest proportion of C-sections that are seen. Now, in a healthy facility, if we say there are 78% of population that is born in healthy facility that could be availed. However, in a public health facility, you have nearly 52% of which the C-sections or the cesareans account for 17% uh, of the total births in India. Now, uh, the next interesting topic is uh, tubers. Now, tubers are the kind of uh, fruits that could be found or uh, tubers that could be found uh, in the ground, uh, ground, underground, okay. So, in South India, 
uh, and in various parts they are known by various names chinese potato is one of the common name and it's also known as the lost vegetable of africa now the flowers are deep blue in color the cropping season is july to october they have lots of properties in terms of higher amount of antioxidants antiseptic properties and useful for eye ailments so here are some of the uh, examples of tubers the next is locust now locust is an interesting topic in itself recently or every year what we witness is a huge swarm of locust coming entering into india through the borders from pakistan these are basically the yellow locust now an interesting scenario about these lo locusts is they can consume the food equivalent to their weight in 24 hours and they have a life span of nearly 90 days that's around three months span in Barme recently, you had a lot of locusts that have damaged nearly 55,000 he hectares of the farm area this year. Uh, from every year where you have around 10 swarms of locusts visiting, this time it was very high, which was around 200. And this is one of the most fierce uh, aspect that was seen. In the regions of Gujarat, Banaskanta and Patan were the two affected areas. We also have a locust watch center in Jodhpur, which works over the annual number of locusts being visiting into an area now locusts are unique in themselves because uh, they first of all consume food if they run short of food they start consuming themselves so that's again a kind of very um, interesting phenomena or an interesting behavior that is seen they also have an ability to change their direction based on the wind so they move with the wind and as they move they usually move in the areas where you have higher density of agricultural uh, crops that are seen now what are the regions which are most prone because these are the regions which are bordering to pakistan from the gujarat border sorry from the rajasthan border so these are the major areas where you have but besides these the impact was also seen in the gujarat so the 11 districts that border pakistan are important you could have a direct question which of the following is not a district that borders pakistan from rajasthan so again an important aspect the next important aspect that we are talking about is arsenic con contamination. Now, what is a permeable limit? It is 10 micrograms of inorganic arsenic per cubic meter of air. Again, we have seen a lot of arsenic being going into the agricultural land and the first contamination was seen back in 1983. However, the US protection limit has talked about maximum contaminant level for public supplies at 0 0.01 milligrams per liter. Here you have some of the most worst affected states. If we talk on to the statistics here, you have highest proportion of population being affected in Assam and Bihar. But in terms of number of population, you have highest proportion affected in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar in terms of the total population but proportion to the state you have very high significant proportion seen in Assam and Bihar and then obviously West Bengal around of the total population in India you have 18.8 percent of the population that is affected due to arsenic contamination now it leads to numerous health diseases a list of which is mentioned here it would be also available in your handouts the next is how does how can we actually uh, control the issue of arsenic? So the first important thing is ion exchange process. You can have coagulation techniques. Also, there could be blending of low arsenic water and high arsenic water in order to uh, curb the issues. Arsenic is present in water, air, soil. So all of those are contaminated with uh, the effects of arsenic. Tree rings and Understanding global warming or climate change is again interesting phenomena. The rings of the tree, if they are wider, it's during the warm months. If they are thinner, it's during the cold months. So it's very clear based on the rings, you can understand how much uh, global warming has taken place. If you have wider regions, that means there is more impact of the warm climatic conditions. Also, you have the difference in the color, the light colors and the dark colors. Dark colors are seen during the late summer and fall. Light color rings are usually seen in the spring and early summer period. And if you look onto the historical hurricanes, you would see sections in between where you would have less oxygen isotopes that would be seen. And those indicate the seasons where you had hurricanes that were seen.
The next is community based conservation drive. Now, Manas is one of the centuries where we have been talking about community based uh, conservation drive mainly for uh, the wildlife management. We have been talking about local communities working in line with the interest of the common people, more of ecological knowledge, and uh, better governance and development in those regions. Also, uh, another important aspect is government has recently waived off the environmental clearance for offshore and onshore gas and oil exploration projects so again this is very very important because uh, this is one of the projects through which india would be able to meet the crude oil uh, needs so that is again important the next is the difference in ngt and the central pollution control board now central pollution control board has been directed by uh, the national green tribunal to find the gaps in the compliance of pollution abatement so that's one of the major aspects that have been seen not only in few of the states but as well as the union territories we are also talking about the uh, polluted river stretches talking about the air quality the deterioration of air quality in the major metropolitan cities and section 3 of the ngt is again important for the same so it's pd environmental justice talking about uh, a statutory organization which could be established under the ministry of environment forest and climate change is again important from some of the important mcqs locust is one of the very important topics for you uh, rc contamination the contamination and the proportion the probable sites and the contaminated sites talking about uh, the cyclone mikunu that is again important and cyclone luban now these are the cyclones which have have led to severe um, flood conditions or creation of lakes and deserts in the regions of Arabian Peninsula. So those were some of the key highlights from this edition. We would be focusing on many more interesting topics. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful evening.